Hello, everyone. Um, nasi lemak. How many of us here today has eaten nasi lemak in this room? Okay, a fair bit of 20 people. So, have you ever wondered the individual environmental impact of what you consume? In the worst case scenario, 20 people, 20 plastic bags has been um, used, 20 plastic spoons has been used, and 20 packaging has been used. And they are all heading towards our landfills. Um, but that is okay, guys, because the current economic system permits that kind of behavior. The system that we have all inherited in our, from our ancestors can be seen as a straight line. Somewhere up the production line, um, people take resources from the planet, makes and cooks the ingredients for us, and once we're done consuming it, we dispose it back to the planet. This is called the linear economy. And there are only three things you need to remember from this. Takes, mix, and waste. So I'm here to share with you all something that I've learned over the past year. It is that this straight line is more flexible than we thought. If you trace back to the root of the problem, you would find that we are stuck in a dichotomy between producers and consumers. All products and services are designed for a one-way transaction. You are either on the side of producing or on the side of consuming. In the near future, you can take that straight line to be looped back from where it all started, whereby producers and consumers are intertwined, interchangeable, and the distinction between them is blurred. Whether pre-production, post-production, pre-consumption, post-consumption, the output of each of these processes has the potential to feed into a new cycle as input or as raw materials. This is called the circular economy. It is an alternative economic system that is restorative and regenerative by design. So when I talk about design, I do not mean how our nasi lemak is going to look. Design is not entirely about form or aesthetics. We are unawarely surrounded by design. And design is all about intention, how this mic is designed. And the intention here is to be able to receive sound and send signals to the speakers. How the chairs you are sitting on is intended for you to rest your back and be comfortable while listening. However, our intentions in a linear economy tends to fall short on just the consumers. We have placed that finishing line a little earlier than we should. Instead, we have to zoom out and consider the context and where we as consumers and all our purchases sit within that system. In the case of our beloved dish and everything else we see, it's the landfill. Designers has completely overlooked where their designs and products end up post-consumption. Where we're at right now is ultimately a misstep taken during the design stage of every businesses. And to transition to a circular economy is, if you think about it, a design challenge. So how then do we design for an economy that is restorative and regenerative? There are three principles you need to follow. These are the intentions and mindsets you need to adopt when you are on the drawing board. Now, the first principle is to eliminate the idea of waste. The, you have to design out waste. The footprint of what you do and the products and services you provide has to be minimal. One of the ways to do it is to uh, embed intelligence into your products. Are you able to dematerialize a chunk of your business? Are you able to use less physical materials in your day-to-day -day operation with hopes of generating less waste? If you're a supermarket owner, for example, what you're selling is essentially the access to goods and sustenance. You could create an app that registers all the transaction of your customers and collecting data of what types of food and how much food they, they, they buy regularly. Through time, 
the data accumulated to extent that to, it can be able to um, predict how much food you need um, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, annually, and suggest the portion that you should buy the next time through the app. This way, on an individual level, the next time you head into a supermarket, you are not tempted to those buy three for two offers, and instead buy the suggested portion from the ad, or maybe an offer specifically tailored for you, um, potentially saving money while also generating less waste uh, for yourself in the supermarket. Uh, dematerialized, um, embed intelligence, and also digitized. Another way we can design out waste is to switch between selling a product to selling a service. Everything we see that has a price set on nowadays indicates it is up for ownership or possession. Since when did we get so entrenched in the idea of ownership that we forgot what we are actually paying for? If you buy a table lamp, for example, are you really buying a table lamp? Or are you buying illumination? Instead of buying a table lamp, could you buy um, the access to light through a subscription model? So whenever your light isn't lighting up properly, the first thing we tend to do is to go and try to replace it. But with this new way, you can call up your light provider to come in and inspect your bulb before deciding if you need a brand new one. If it is completely unrepairable, they would then replace the bulb for you directly from the manufacturers, removing the use of packaging. The second principle of a circular economy is to keep materials and products in use, intentionally extending its lifespan for as long as possible. I'm sure all of you share the same sentiment as I do when a particular hardware is not functioning properly as it should. A phone screen not displaying, a camera zoom lens not twisting. And the worst part of it all is you know what the problem is, but you are unable to fix it. This, now, nowadays, most designs are designed to be obsolete whenever a small component within that product is broken. This is due to the industry um, encouraging us to buy more stuff. This idea of making us pay more and privatization of information needs to go off the window to make way for a new and more open source era. The, the new design era encourages us to design for modularity. Design your products to be easily disassembled and broken apart into smaller components to be reused, repaired, and remanufactured. This way, you are circulating your products back into the economy while retaining most of the value you possess during your initial purchase. Besides that, as a designer, I always wonder why do products have to be designed for a single purpose only? Why not embrace the potentials of, the, of a cross-sector um, collaboration in the intention of extending your product's lifespan? Take the um, single-use water bottles that has been plaguing us for the past few years. People in poorer countries depend on these bottles to get clean, clean water. And with circular design, you could design its shape into a stackable material, whereby when it's done consuming, you could then use it for the next house extension that you always wanted to give your children, but you're not able to afford. This is like a marriage between fast-moving consumer goods and the construction industry through the second principle of circular economy. Now, the third principle of a circular economy is to regenerate our natural systems. Uh, we live in an era where we are uh, extremely inseparable from materials in our daily lives. This is built on an industrial revolution that whereby manufacturing has become so efficient on the assembly line that we are perpetually producing things. This exponential rate of churning out things needs to, is surely exhausting our resources. Instead of constantly taking, we need to give back to our planet and not in the form of microplastics. 
Speaking of plastics, we have up to date generated 8.3 billion metric tons since its first inventions during the 70s. Now, 8.3 billion, I feel a bit lost at that time, and I did some research. So let me tell you this. Do you guys know the Empire State Building in New York? There are 25,000 of those buildings floating in our oceans and buried in landfills. What if I told you that there is another natural material that coexists alongside plastics and is 22 times more than the amount generated? Plants, specifically cellulose, the most abundant natural biopolymer made up of chains of glucose monomers, in other words, sugar molecules. This renewable material is being generated by nature 22 times more than plastics annually, 180 billion metric tons per year, 550,000 of buildings that grow out of the soil, decomposes to give nutrients for the next batch of buildings. In future products, are we able to use smart and natural materials void of chemicals that is hazardous to our environment? Could we use renewable materials or natural byproducts from our existing consumption habits? I am sure all of you are aware of the global epidemic ritual of drinking coffee. I drink coffee every day. What happens to those um, coffee grounds? Tons and tons of it goes to the landfill, and only a small percentage gets used as compost. Why not intervene and recover these materials um, and recirculate it back into the economy as a replacement to plastics? Not only are you using a renewable material, when the material has reached its lifespan, it is able to decompose and breathe life into the next cup of coffee before turning into a new product, and the cycle goes on. Nature is circular, by nature. And we should all ensure it, collectively ensure it stays that way. So let us all take a step back and relook at, at our national pride. There is 32 million Malaysians, and presuming one third of us eats nasi lemak a day, that gives us 10 million servings of nasi lemak produced in a day. What about the byproducts from it? Can we reevaluate um, our favorite breakfast through those three principles? The cooking oil from frying ikan bilis, the coconut shell and coconut starch from santan, egg shells, peanut shells, banana stalks, rice husks. Can we recover these materials and recirculate it back into the economy, perhaps even make the experience of eating nasi lemak circular. We can all eliminate waste in our favorite breakfast. We can all keep materials in use in our national dish. And we can all regenerate Malaysia's natural systems using our existing consumption habits. There is a new way to be proud of our, our nasi lemak, and that way is circular. Thank you.